Good morning, my name's Tom, um, I'm from the Shoreham site. Uh, we're in Luke 7 this morning uh, and we're going to look at two responses to Jesus, John the Baptist um, and the Pharisees, particularly um, on the subject of doubt. Uh, now, Bonham's Piper, uh, who's the son um, of the famous preacher, uh, John Piper, has written a book called Help My Unbelief, particularly on this subject of doubt. And he distinguishes between two different types of doubt. He says uh, there's healthy doubt and there's unhealthy doubt. Healthy doubt um, is summed up uh, by the phrase, um, I believe, help my unbelief. And that's from uh, Mark, this father who brings his son, um, who's got a demon and the disciples have been unable to cast it out. And he comes to Jesus and says, look, your disciples have not been able to cast this demon out. Um, if you can, can you help us? And Jesus says, if I can, he says, all things are possible um, if you believe. And the father goes, I believe, help my unbelief. Look, uh, Jesus, I, th I, th I think you can do it, but I'm just, I'm just struggling here. Um, healthy doubt um, at, his, at his heart um, wants to ask questions. It's wanting assurance and it's meant to drive us to God. Whereas um, unhealthy doubt, is actually really true unbelief. It's at heart, it's a rejection, it's scepticism, it's cynicism and ultimate rejection. And we're going to see um, in these two two um, parties in the story that one has got a healthy kind of doubt, and the other one really is unhealthy doubt. Um, so John the Baptist, he's sat in prison, okay? Um, he said, Herod the king... Um, you've done wrong by getting rid of your wife and marrying your brother's wife and that's wrong and he's been thrown into prison for that and don't be afraid to, to put yourself into story put yourself in john's shoes he john baptist pr probably grew up with jesus we don't know for certain but we know that their mums were really good friends remember mary goes to visit elizabeth john the baptist has heard the Christmas story okay he knows that an angel showed up to his dad and said yeah, you're gonna have a baby he knows the angel showed up to Mary because he's heard about it from his mum he knows about the shepherds and the wise men and the stable and there's no room at the inn okay he's probably grown up um, with Jesus and encountered him okay um, he knows that he's this special uh, child he knows he's this special prophet that's been raised up this guy that Isaiah spoke about is going to be the one who's going to prepare the way of the Lord okay John is fully aware of this okay but he sat in prison okay and he he's he stood on the bank um, of the river Jordan and said look behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world he baptized Jesus he's the Holy Spirit falls on him in Behold, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. OK, he's aware of all of this, but he's sat in prison and he's going, this doesn't look like the kingdom of God has come. This doesn't look like the Messiah has shown up. This, I've read my Old Testament. This doesn't look like um, God's salvation has come. Uh, so he sends his disciples to Jesus to say, have I got it wrong? OK, are you the Messiah or are we supposed to look for another look jesus i'm really struggling here i believe but you've got to help my unbelief uh, and jesus says to his disciples after healing people uh casting out uh, spirits he he alludes to isaiah 35 um and says you know what what tell them what you've seen and heard the blind receive the sight the lame walk lepers are cleansed the dead hear. Uh, the dead are raised and the poor have had their good news uh, have had their uh, good news preached to them okay all these things that Isaiah said when the king the king's going to come when the kingdom comes they're happening and he says and blessed is the one who's not offended by me um translation blessed is the one who gets it that the kingdom is is coming in a different way to the old testament john only knows and actually all the old testament prophets only knew of when the kingdom comes that's the end that's when evil's defeated new heavens new earth that all happens in one go and as we're going to see over the next few days there's the mystery of the kingdom 
uh, the phrase that Jesus uses is that the, the kingdom comes in seed form in advance of that. It doesn't all happen in one go. There's these, the kingdom comes in a small and almost secretive way um, with Jesus coming and it will ultimately consummate it um, in the future. And Jesus says, bless to you if you if you get that. So that's John. That's he's got healthy doubt, and ultimately it's to drive you to Jesus. Okay. If you if you think I'm struggling with some doubt here, you to go to Jesus, go to God, go and find uh answers to your questions, find l- the love of the Father and a reassurance uh from Him. Um, and actually you'll find if you feel like you've come out of a, a dry a dry patch, how much more refreshed uh, you are uh, going to Jesus, actually coming through that. And sometimes God will let you go through times like that where it just seem far away, but actually it's to draw you uh, back to him. And then we get the Pharisees, okay? And they're really, they're, they've got some unhealthy doubt. Um, this is the end of verse 30. The Pharisees, uh, the lawyers, rejected the purpose of God for themselves. Okay, and Jesus says, they're like children sitting in the marketplace calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not weep. For John the Baptist to come eating no bread and drinking no wine and you say, he's a demon. The son of man has come eating and drinking and you say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and, and sinners. He says, you Pharisees, you're like children in a playground that don't know what game to play. Um, you don't know how to read the situation. John, you've rejected him. He's a, he's a weirdo in his uh, camel skin, eating locusts and honey out in the wilderness. He's all fire and brimstone. He's this funeral, uh, the dirge uh, that you've, and you you didn't weep at the dirge. And and I've come and I'm bringing a party. I've got the, getting the tax collectors and sinners and I'm eating and drinking with them. And I'm saying, look, the kingdom's come, let's have a party. And you, you're not celebrating at the wedding. Okay, you don't know how to react and ultimately you've reject you've rejected me and John the Baptist and Jesus are both saying the same message the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of God is at hand the kingdom of God's come near repent believe the gospel that's the message and they've rejected it so are you struggling with doubt this morning are you finding some things confusing okay go to Jesus. Don't react with scepticism. Don't react with cynicism. That's how the world reacts. You only have to turn the news on for five minutes. You only have to open social media for five minutes and you're hit with cynicism, scepticism. No, go to Jesus. Find reassurance. Ask questions, okay? It's not it's good to ask questions. What's the heart behind those? Is it uh, to catch Jesus out like the Pharisees or is it I believe, Jesus, I believe you, but I'm really, I'm struggling here. Let me pray for us. Uh, Father, thank you uh, for Jesus. Uh, thank you just for his patience with us, for his compassion, for his mercy. God, I pray for uh, anybody watching this that's uh, struggling with doubt this morning. God, I pray for, bring reassurance, God. Send your spirit to, as Paul says in Romans 8, to testify with their spirit that they're children of God and to uh, uh, reassure them of your love. Uh, God, come and send your spirit now. Equip us uh, for the day ahead. In Jesus' name, amen.